Hello, one and all, and welcome to another one of our unboxings. I hope you're having a fantastic day. We are in sunny Edinburgh today. Hey, <laughs> there you go. That's uh, something of a rare occurrence. Hopefully this year will be uh, a bit more of a common occurrence than a rare one. Anyway, today we thought we'd give you uh, an overlook of something new. Usually we open the sets as they come out and um, we unbox products as they are new newly released but you know our plan is also to hopefully to go back in time and unbox some of the other products so today Scotty and I will be unboxing one of the Pioneer Challenger decks that was released last year thank you very much Scotty for that introduction so this is the 2022 Arts of Humans Pioneer Challenger deck and this series of decks was introduced a while back, if I'm not mistaken, in 2021, with the idea of um, giving new players um, enough cards to play into the formats, whether it is Standard or Pioneer. And even now they started with the, um, I think it's Basic or Standard or Challenger decks for Commander. I don't remember the specific name. But basically these are decks that should have everything that you need to start playing right away. So you could just leave it up and go to your local game store and just uh, participate in any of those formats events. Now, the reason why I got uh, this one in particular is because I figured out that, you know, um, currently in, in the different metas, there's a way to uh, edit this deck and add the different cards. And you can play this in both Standard and Pioneer and also Modern. So, of course, a lot of the cards that will come inside here, which I know most of them what they are, hence why I got it. A lot of the cards that come in here are good and decent for the humans deck, the white weenie deck that um, is currently fairly strong and competitive in all the formats that I've um, aforementioned. But, you know, this one has both colors and you'll get a, a little bit of everything inside, including some lands and all that. Now, let's look at the contents of the deck proper. Uh, okay, so we get the 60 card deck, a 50 card sideboard and a deck box. That's very nice. You get basically everything you need, including the sideboard. You get a little bit of a, an introduction. And if we look at the deck, it's actually shiny and it's very interesting because it's, it has a little bit of texture here. Here it's a more of a patina and some texture around the Magic the Gathering logo. So as usual, WotC has gone out of the way to make the boxes look really nice and fancy. And uh, out of curiosity, this has been made in Japan. So interestingly enough, you can get these boxes for around 40-ish um, something pounds, anywhere between 40 and I guess 50 pounds, depending on where you buy this. Um, it is likely that they've sold out by now because these are 2022 at your local game store. Uh, but you can still find them online. You can still find them from resellers. I got this one from Amazon. Unfortunately, our local store didn't have any of these decks anymore. But uh, yeah, that's that's it. So without further ado, let's get cracking. And uh, yeah, I, this is the first time I wanted to get into Pioneer myself. Ooh, because dragons are for cowards. <laughs> I love that message. Yeah, I wanted to get into Pioneer myself. I wanted to find something that would get me inside. I used to play um, competitively uh, much, much longer than uh, now. So um, that was about 10 years ago. Actually, it was more than 10 years ago now. Whew. It's been 17 years since I've played competitively in anything. And uh, I want to get something that has all the commons, uncommons and rares and mythics that I haven't been able to collect throughout the years. Uh, since I still have some of the stronger ones from the past, I thought I would just go for this one. So anyway, this deck box looks as such. It is bigger uh, than a normal deck box. I don't know if you'll be able to stick 60 cards inside realistically, if you sleeve them, it could be. Um, it depends on the sleeves. It could be, could also not be. Anyway, it opens up as such. You get a placeholder, so the cards don't move up around too much. You get the deck proper. 
uh, you get the tokens and some little um, you know placeholders or how I would reckon how to play and all that stuff you get the sideboard you get a little separator which is really beautiful I think I'll keep the deck why not this is really nice and and look it's really beautiful you get a little uh, swamp logo and it's a little bit textured it won't last you too long if you're one of those people who um, bashes things around in the backpack um, definitely will start peeling right away but you know it's great for somebody who has nothing and just wants to get their feet wet into pioneer and then we get an insert which is nice which explains to you what is pioneer and you can stop right here if you're new and you want to check out how this works yes and where you can play. Uh, it's nice because if you um, are, are a complete beginner, sorry for the shake. If you're a complete beginner, you can just go on the website, find out where you can play in case you bought the deck somewhere else in your local area. And you have a connection to a companion, which as you'll know is used in any store events. And then it gives you an idea of how the other decks in um, the series play. And um, what else? And then you get a little bit of a large Thalia Guardian of Thraven illustration. That's really, really nice. It's always beautiful. I like that. And again, this is aimed for beginners or for people who don't have the cards and want to try and out the deck. Um, for this kind of deck, realistically, almost all of the white cards you can reuse for the current meadows. And this is one of the reasons why I went for this deck. There's is it creativity as well, as you saw, there's Gruul. These decks have a lot of cards that you can just play out right away. I see a little bit of a bend, it's nothing massive. So let's have a look first off at the token proper. And see what we get here. So we get clues and this is Modern Horizons 2. That's really beautiful. The cards feel very, very thick. Giggity. And a lot of clues. And then some placeholder cards to write yourself what tokens you want to use or what cards, if they flip, are going to be. And then you get a little bit of a useless one, but again, it just tells you what to do. They get humans, and that's that. Those are the tokens that you can get in here. Let's have a look now. Uh, this deck is really fun. I think Fire Near is actually a very intelligent move on Watsi's part because, well, if, I, if I can open the pull tab, because, uh, you know, people that wanted to, to try and get their feet wet into Standard because Standard is kind of dead. Uh, well, that's at a tournament level anyway on, on the local scene because if you're looking at uh, Arena Standard is still fairly alive and it's really the most played format online. But yeah, um, they wanted to have an in-between, you know, so that people currently in one of the most popular phases of Magic the Gathering could still have a place to play. So that's why they created Pioneer as a format. And as you've seen probably with the current pro scenes, uh, this is one of the rage uh, formats and where people can play in and qualify for, you know, the bigger events. So that's very nice. I also think this is one of the reasons why standard is, has gone down even more so unfortunately because you know the the scene focus has um, swapped to pioneer but anyway without further ado i won't get into too much right <laughs> anyway so the first one is a giant killer this is from Thronville drain it's a human peasant one two creature uh, it costs one white it is an adventure card so it has two abilities and for one generic one white you tap it and you tap another creature so it's a nicely manipulator and then for chop down you destroy target creature with power four or greater so this is very good and you get three of them if i'm not mistaken one is going to be in the sideboard then you get a rally the ranks which is an enchantment that enters uh, the battlefield you choose a creature type and the creatures of the chosen type get plus one plus one so it's a tribal buff really nice and there you go you have four of those ones then you get luminarch aspirant which is the image from the front of the box 
As a human cleric, one one uh, for one generic and one white. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. This is really, really good for a quick deck. And there you go, you get four of these ones. Then you get the Caves of Koilos, which is one of the pain lands from back when. You get four of these, that's always nice. You get the Concealed Courtyard. This is one of the slow lands from Kaladesh. Oh, it's really nice. You get four of these ones. You get a Godless Shrine, one of the shock lands. I would have hoped they would have given us a four, but realistically, you can't get too much value in this kind of deck, unfortunately. And then you get Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, which is an insane card that has a first striker, as a 2-1 human soldier for one generic and one white and a non-creature spell costs one more to cast generic so that's really really strong one of the moving pieces of this puzzle as a whole so I'll use lieutenants as a 1-1 human soldier for one generic and one white when it enters the battlefield you put a plus one plus one counter on each human you control and as you can see it's all humans here and whenever another human enters the battlefield and you control you put a plus one plus one counter on this creature so that's really good and you get four of them so that's it for the white then we move on to the black with blood soap champion which is a two one human warrior for one black and uh, it cannot block and it has raid for one generic one black you return this card from the graveyard to the battlefield activate this ability only if you've attacked with a creature this turn so this is a creature just keeps coming back and being annoying from Tarkir, if I'm not mistaken. Motobolt. This is a beautiful, beautiful card and is one of the more expensive ones in here. Really, really useful. It allows you to uh, transform it for one generic into a 2-2 creature that has all creature types, so I can get buffed by the buffing for the tribal. And you get one, two, which is insane. Then you have Kite Sail Freebooter, which is a human part, one, two, uh, for one generic and one black, has flying when it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals his or her hand, you choose a non-creature, non-land card from it, exile that card until it leaves the battlefield. So this is one of the ways to interact with your opponents, you get four of them. It's not a bad card actually, because as a, as a tool set, it's always good to have some hand interaction, and especially in Pioneer. Dauntless Bodyguard, this is a human knight, 2, 1, for 1, white, from the Dominaria set. As it enters the battlefield, you choose another creature you control. You can sacrifice this one to give indestructible to that creature until the end of the turn. You get 4 of these, this is a very good card. And then we get uh, Dire Tactics, which is an instant for Orzov. And um, Exile Target Creature, if you don't control human, you lose life equal to the creature's toughness. Of course, you're gonna be controlling quite a few humans, so that's really good. You only get two of these though. Then you get Unclaimed Territory, which um, you choose a creature type when it enters the battlefield, and then you can add one mana of any color of the mana pool, and you can only do that for the creature type you've chosen. So that's really, really nice. Next up, you get the Secluded Courtyard, and when it enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type, and then uh, you uh, tap to add one mana of any color uh, to cast any creature spell of the chosen type or to activate abilities of that creature type that you've chosen. So again, really, really good for tribal. Next up, you get Blood Chief's Thirst. It's a one black sorcery, has kicker for two generic, one black. Destroy target creature or planeswalker with converter mana cost of two or less. If the spell was kicked, destroy instead a target creature or planeswalker. So this is more interaction, very, very good. Then you get Thrap and Inspector, which is a one, two human soldier creature for one white. And enters the battlefield, you investigate. So you create those crew tokens and that four of them and then you get three planes so all in all this is an interesting deck i will go into the sideboard really quickly but what it wants to do it wants to be an aggro deck right or what they call weenie deck so weenie and aggro are two terms the aggro means that it's aggressive and it goes to the face uh, that's mainly its purpose it doesn't have a lot of spells that do damage or any combos it is s simple as i want small creatures which is the weenie part because they're weak and yeah, i want to buff them up and i want them really in the face of my opponent as quickly as possible therefore the curve of 
of the lands tends to be smaller because the cost of the creatures, as you can see, is not that high. I don't think there's anything above two. So overall, the mana core curve just stops at two here for now. And that's really, really good. And uh, this is one of the more basic but more effective ways to play Magic the Gathering. And you'll find that if you've never played before, white and red as well had, tend to have some of the more aggro-ish or quicker decks um, red also has burn, but some of the more aggro-ish and quicker decks that have the lowest curve. So we'll look at the sideboard just now. Here we go. You get Containment Priest, which is a really good card. It's a 2-2 flash, a human cleric for one generic and one white. And if a known token creature went into the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead. So this is really great for any interactions such as take put directly into play from graveyard or from other places or you know other creatures that allow you to put straight up into play without casting this is a great great interaction a good card for a sideboard then you get another giant killer as i said you get a sun gold sentinel which is a 3-2 human soldier for one generic and one white when it enters the battlefield attacks you can exile up to one target card from a graveyard and then uh, this has Coven for one generic and one white. You choose a color, Sun Gold Sentinel against Hexproof from that color until the end of the turn. Cannot be blocked by creatures of this color, of course. And activate only if you control three or more creatures with different powers. So this is for Graveyard Hate. And for Graveyard Hate, it means that you are literally um, going against decks that play from their graveyard, which there are quite a bit, especially in Pioneer. You get Portable Hole, which is an artifact for one white. And in when it enters the battlefield, it, you exile target no land permanent and opponent controls with mana value two or less until this lives, leaves the battlefield. And you get three of these ones, so that's good. And of course, Portable Holes are there to be able to interact with bigger creatures or certain permanents such as you know kiki jiki's reflection and all the other stuff the more annoying things planeswalkers etc you have a way to remove them kind of similar to ossification in a way and really good card and you get sunset revelry which is a sorcery for one generic or one white if an opponent has more life than you you gain four life if an opponent controls more creatures than you you create two one one white human creature tokens and if an opponent has more cards in hand than you you draw a card this is a simple equalizer it allows you to get back if you've fallen behind to to catch up with your opponent and then you get duress which is a sorcery for one black uh, target opponent reveals their hand you choose a non-creature non land card from it that player discards it this is really useful against decks that are combo -y or that uh, cast uh, really annoying spells that could throw a wrench into your deck proper so as a deck this is quite a great deck to go off just from the start you could even just main deck a couple of the portable holes and that will allow you to um, interact more with the current format decks and you literally could just go into um, an event at your local store with one of these decks and maybe you know change a couple of things as i said it's nice to have some more interaction straight up um, from the get-go due to the way that the current meta is and you could just play in and and do decently with this kind of deck so it's definitely something that um, I hope you will enjoy if you do decide to take it. Anyway, that's it from us. Uh, this hopefully was a fairly short video to give you an overview of the deck and our opinions. Again, if you're starting into Pioneer, if you're wanting to get into a, a playing a format that's not standard, maybe because your local game store like ours doesn't have a lot of standard tournaments because not a lot of people play standard, then this allows you to definitely um, put, get your feet wet and start dipping into the pool of Pioneer. It is great. I'm looking forward to this year's decks if they're gonna do any more challenger decks, which I would reckon they would because they've been pushing Pioneer quite strongly with the pro scene. And unfortunately that takes a backseat with standard. 
and standard is unfortunately going to be overlooked by most people because of this but you know standard can still be fun and hopefully they'll figure out some ways to bring back tournaments uh, and events for standard so that people can still enjoy it either way this is a great deck can't wait to play it and i organize it to start playing in both um, standard pioneer and modern there are quite a few things a few things you can do the main cards out of this deck are the lieutenant thalia the guardian luminarch aspirin the giant killer the portable hole and the Donnellus Bodyguard, those are some of the main cards that you'll see that even the Pro Tour decks use. And um, of course, there are the Motor Vaults inside, the Godless Shrine. So those are really, really good. There's definitely a, a reason to keep at least 60 to 70% of this deck, depending on how you change it for Pioneer. And as I said, if you don't have any cards to change it, what you get here is still very good. So that's it from us. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully this uh, change up is uh, appreciated for you guys, especially for the new ones out there that are uh, looking into Pioneer. And uh, yeah, that's it from uh, Scotty and I. Uh, we thank you very much. We wish you a lovely day, a blessed day. Be good, be kind, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.